Hey everyone, today we're going to cover the two-pointer technique. The two-pointer technique is a near necessity in any software developer's toolkit, especially when it comes to technical interviews. And the reason for this is because of how omnipresent the use of two variables pointing to different things is. So we'll cover the basics so you can know when and how to use this very valuable technique. And what is the two-pointer technique? Well, it's a technical interview pattern that you can use. It is exactly as it sounds, which is using two different pointers, so two different variables or references, to keep track of usually arrays or string indexes. And the reason we keep track of these indexes using two pointers is because it saves time and space. A lot of problems with strings and arrays involve the comparison of two different elements. And so by referencing two at a time and iterating while referencing two at a time, we're able to cut down dramatically on the number of operations that needs to occur. Let's take a step back. What exactly are pointers? Well, in computer science, a pointer is a reference to an object. In many programming languages, that object stores a memory address of another value located in computer memory. So that's a fancy way of saying that it's something that references something else. In many cases, it's as simple as a variable referencing an index, but it could also be a variable that points to a node of some sort, as we'll cover later, or another kind of object. To keep it simple, just think of this visual. If this were an array with elements 1, 3, 4, 8, and 9, and we had one pointer and a second pointer, imagine that these are just variables storing index 0 and storing index 4. So when do we use two pointers? Well, a lot of times, when you have to analyze each element of a collection compared to its other elements, you'll find use in having two pointers. For example, let's say we have an array and we want to start from the first index of the array and iterate through the data structure one or more times. Having another pointer gives us something to keep track of each level of the loop. And it's so common because it allows us to process two elements per loop instead of just one. So what we're going to explore today is two different versions. Two pointers, each starting at the beginning and moving inwards until they meet. And two pointers, one slow and one fast. And these patterns can be used for string or array questions, or as we'll see, some linked list questions as well. So let's run through an example. Many of you will have heard of the two sum problem. The two sum problem is this. Assume you have a sorted array R. So let's give ourselves a visual. And you're tasked with figuring out the pair of elements where R, P, so the element P in R, and R, Q, element Q in R, where they add up to a certain number. So let's say here they add up to 6. So from a quick glance, we can see that 2 and 4 add up to 6. If we were to get the machine to do this, though, one way is to iterate through each element, and then at each element, iterate through each other element, and then compare the two. But that gives you a time complexity of O of n squared, because at each iteration, we have to iterate through the entire array again. 
but, but we can optimize. We can use two pointers instead. So here on line four, we assign a variable called pointer one to zero, which is the first index, and pointer two to the length of r minus one, which is the final index. So length r minus one gets us the last possible index in that array. And when we first start, pointer one points to the first element in the array, and pointer two points to the last element. So we have this setup where we have a function for two sum, and we have zero, and then the end, and our iteration starts while pointer one is less than pointer two. So since the array is sorted, we can use two pointers to process them faster. So that's what we've been doing. One pointer starts from the beginning, one pointer starts at the end, and we just add the values at these pointers and move them correspondingly as we iterate and discover more about the uh, elements. So how do we discover more about the elements? We can use a check like this. We'll get their sum, and if their sum equals the target value, then we'll return true. So what if it's not the target value? It likely won't be because we need to have this discovery phase. And so as we're, as we're moving, we need to tell it to move inwards. So starting at the beginning and starting at the end, what we want to do is go in. So we'll move pointer one, which starts at zero, inwards. And we'll move pointer two, which starts at the end, inwards as well by adding one and then by subtracting one. So fleshed out together, here's what we have. Two sum, pointer one, pointer two. While one is less than two, we find a sum. And then if it's not what we want, if the combination is not what we want, we move them inwards, depending on which will get us closer. So another example of using two pointers is this notion of slow and fast pointers in linked lists. So let's say we have a linked list that looks like this. And we want to find out um, if there's a cycle in the linked list. So nodes one, two, three, there's no cycle but we can see that there's a cycle between nodes three and four. So how would we detect the cycle? What's interesting is we can also use two pointers here. The idea is to move the fast pointer. So there's a slow and a fast pointer. The idea is to move the fast pointer twice as fast as the first pointer, and what will happen is the distance between them increases by one at each step. And so this is how it's expressed in code. While there's still room to go, increment slow by one, and then increment fast by two. At some point, if both pointers meet, then we'll have found a cycle in the linked list. If we reach the end of the list and no cycle has been found, that means no cycle is present. And so this runs in linear time, and it might be a little confusing as to why it works. So let's think about this. Let's do pointer one is the slow pointer. So Iteration one, it'll move here. Iteration two, it'll move here. And then at iteration three, it'll move here. And then at iteration four, it'll move here. So that's the slow pointer. With the fast pointer, 
iteration one, it'll move to three. And then at iteration two, it'll move from three back to three. And notice that its iteration two and the slow pointer's iteration two, remember slow is one, two, end up at the same spot. And so here's the full code for using two pointers to detect a cycle. The theory behind slow and fast pointers can be found on another tutorial on, and, and in other places on algodaily.com. But for now, this is an introduction to the use of two pointers, and I hope you learned.